Hey, what's happening everybody out there? I'm Jake James Lugo and welcome to the channel. So let's talk about this Castlevania Netflix series that came out yesterday here in the United States. If you don't know what I'm talking about, the Castlevania Netflix series is four episodes for its first season and it's based on the Castlevania video game series. Now, this particular series, or at least season one of it, is based on Castlevania 3 on the NES, which is Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse. It stars, or at least focuses, on Trevor Belmont and kind of tells, I guess you could say, the origins of the Belmont clan and their kind of war against Dracula. Now, I say that very loosely because, again, we're going to get into the nitty gritty of it, but overall, to kind of give a generalization of my thoughts on this series, it's really not that great in hindsight. After watching the first four episodes of the series, again, the first season is only four episodes, and they're about 20 or so minutes a pop. Uh, this series, while it looks great in the animation, looks pretty damn good. A lot of people have praised it for its really solid, clean-looking animation and smooth action sequences, as well as also dark overtone as a series in general. It's very uh, going in the direction of an R-rated anime, or at least an R-rated property. I still think this is only part way of the journey in order to make a great Castlevania series. Not only do I feel that it's too short and should have been given more episodes to really kind of flesh out and give us an overview of the story, especially if it's adapting the story of Castlevania 3, but I also feel like it's just all over the place within the first four episodes as far as focusing on what this series is actually about. What do I mean by this? Because again, I'm seeing a whole bunch of reviews all over the place, both on YouTube and a variety of other outlets that are really praising this series simply just on the looks and the tone alone, and really not looking at everything else as a whole. Overall, when the series first starts, it was really looking promising to me. I really liked the, the aesthetic of it as far as like the art style, the way that the, the actual animation looks. I think it looks clean and it looks very badass in hindsight compared to a lot of the other Castlevania stuff we've gotten over the years, especially now with how Konami has been handling their IPs as of late. But Dracula looks freaking incredible. The the different cities that the actual story takes place in, I'm guessing within uh what is it within Europe or at least you know Euro Asia, uh where the the actual story itself takes place again, really pulling from the Dracula mythology and the kind of the stuff that's based off in the video games themselves. All that stuff, the aesthetic, the dark tones, the dark colors, even though they're kind of bright with the reds and everything else all over the place, it still looks pretty damn cool to look at. When you first start off the series, you focus a lot more on Dracula himself and kind of gives uh, a little bit of background and a little bit of hindsight of why Dracula wants to destroy humanity. The basic overview of it is that Dracula is getting revenge on humanity for killing his wife. He actually met a woman that was kind of into the sciences that actually entered his castle and the two had an exchange and they, the both of them eventually got married. But because of the time frame where this actually takes place, I believe it's about the 15 or 1600s, you know, somewhere around that time frame, I'm not exactly sure, but the church has a real big uh, grasp and hold on the people that actually live in that country. And they're very uh, condescending when it comes to the sciences, the arts, and different stuff of those types of things. And they look at, you know, science and such uh, more as like witchcraft more than anything else. And that really sucks for Dracula's wife because they look at her as a witch and they burn her at the stake. And because of this, Dracula comes back home one day uh, trying to travel around as a normal man rather than using his powers and he ends up becoming enraged and decides to go on a tirade against the human race. He gives everybody one year to repent for their sins, and pretty much the year goes by, and then all of a sudden, Dracula shows up at the church's doorstep with a bunch of, you know, minions and a whole army full of, like, demons and such, and starts wrecking havoc everywhere. That's where the series kind of, like, starts off, and that's pretty damn freaking cool. However, once it gets past that starting point and it gets into the second and to the third episode, it really kind of takes a nosedive in the pacing and the way that it presents its characters, even though it's really building up the, the, the characters themselves, giving us a little bit of backstory and making us kind of sympathize with who we're seeing on screen. We finally get to see Trevor Belmont at the end of the first episode. And again, it kind of abruptly ends before going and continuing what the events of what's going on there into the second and to the third episode. My main gripe with this series thus far is that it really has a very slow, dour pace after the first episode and then really picks up on the very last episode in episode four and then just stops. And then we have to wait until obviously more than likely it's going to get a second season if there's any more episodes to be added onto this series. But I just feel like if they were really going to kind of adapt Dracula 3, uh, was it uh, Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse into an anime, they should have stuck more with some of the events or at least fleshed out more of the events or at least offered up more episodes into the series to give us the overview and really kind of complete the entire story. Because just by doing this, I feel like either the budget wasn't that much, you know, put into the actual project, uh, they were only trying 
kind of, you know, trying to test the waters to see the response of people if they would really kind of latch on to it. Which again, taking a look at that anime art style, or at least the way that the animation flows smoothly, I can understand everybody being really excited about this, especially if you're a Castlevania fan like myself. But with it just being four episodes and just the second and third episode feeling more kind of like a filler a section of an anime series and then just the first and the last episode having some sort of action that isn't really the big climax of the Dra Castlevania 3 storyline, I feel like there was a huge missed opportunity here. I, uh, in my opinion, I wish that they had delayed the series, completed maybe about four to maybe about six more episodes, have it a 10 episode series, and then release it on Netflix like that as one full season on Netflix. And that would have been much better. I feel like they would have kind of given us more action sequences with Trevor Belmont. Uh, we could have gotten more stuff with Saifa as well as also Alucard, who also make an appearance, uh, again, since they're from uh, Castlevania 3. But also, we're missing characters that we haven't seen yet, which I'm hoping when they do a season two or they add more episodes, they kind of start adding characters like Grant, who's also another playable character in Castlevania 3, if you've played the video game before. Nowhere to be found in this entire four episode arc. Maybe he comes in later episodes Episodes, or again probably down the line or maybe they just completely omitted him uh, from the entire story but either way there's still a lot of work to be done with this series uh, again I wish there was more episodes I wish that we got to see even more of Dracula because that beginning started off so strong and once it got to Trevor Belmont even though he's an interesting character and some of his action sequences and the fights he gets into are so damn cool it just doesn't go anywhere with them it just again takes a nosedive in that second and third episode and then kind of picks up in that fourth episode but either way guys Overall, I feel like Castlevania on Netflix still has a lot a long ways to go. I'm hoping there's more episodes with the second season or more episodes for this first season and that we actually get to see more of what was so good about that first episode when I first started watching the series. But either way, guys, that's just my opinion on Castlevania on Netflix. Hopefully this review or at least these impressions were kind of giving you guys some food for thought about the series. If you've checked it out already, let me know in the comments section below. Tell me what your favorite part of the actual four episodes were or any of the other things that you think can make the series better. Again, any other stuff you want to see them go into and such. One thing I do want to mention that I thought was also another missed opportunity, and I, I couldn't believe this because Castlevania as a game franchise has some of the best video game music out there, or at least some of the most iconic. Not a lot of nods to the video game music whatsoever. There was maybe one track that I recognized when I actually saw Alucard for the first time. I believe it's the menu theme from Castlevania Symphony of the Night. It was very light. I think you could just make it out throughout the dialogue between Trevor and Alucard. But other than that, no vampire killer, no first level stuff. Like again, none of that. Nothing even from Castlevania 3, which again, Bloody Tears is one of the most iconic themes of that franchise and just not used whatsoever and if they did i completely missed it because it was nowhere near recognizable could be a rights issue could be a licensing issue but i want to hear more of that game music if not remixed for the actual series i believe that's a big missed opportunity that a lot of fans would appreciate so anyway don't forget to leave a like on this video subscribe to my channel for all my videos related to video games and a bunch of other cool stuff i got a lot of great surprises and cool content coming very very soon i've been doing a lot of stuff with the coalition i've been doing some stuff with ign i have a whole bunch of unboxing videos that i have on youtube right now over on the coalition youtube channel as well as also some big projects and big uh, things i'm going to be a part of in the coming weeks and i can't wait to share all, all of it with you guys I will talk to all of you again very soon. Peace out. Stay epic, everybody.